Church of God Holy Land. Church of God Holy Land. Um, I want to say that I'm very, very excited to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. I know some of you might have been wondering why I've been away for some few months now. Um, I, I want to thank God that I'm back to church fully. You know, this few months has been very, very tough and challenging in my life and that of my family as well. But I want to thank God that God saw us through despite the challenges. Um, I actually have three testimonies to give this morning. The first testimony is that I want to thank God for my life and that of my family. I want to thank God for seeing us through during this period of challenges and trials in my family. And I want to thank God that God sought all the problems that we were facing in my family. Secondly, I want to thank God for seeing me through in a police case. You know, I know a lot of people in the church don't know what happened, but I guess some of you might have known what happened, maybe through my sister or some other people. You know, there was an incident in my compound where I actually lived, and, um, you know, there's this uh, one of our neighbors who just parked into the compound. Of course, we've been living there before she parked in, so, you know, they came with some military personnel and some army guards like that, so when they came, and we're all thinking that, okay, these people that are parked into this compound now, they are, secu they are um, um, what do they call it now? Like, they are government people, they are army people, they are military family. So we believe our company is more secured, you understand? So during this process, you know, something happened. You know, a neighbor, there was a neighbor in the next compound, you know, because these neighbors, they had three kids, three toddlers. You know, I think they're about two, three years, and then two and a half years or so, three of them. They are all males. So, you know, and they had one nanny that is actually taking, taking care of these three children. So, you know, normally I and some of my neighbors, we don't always hear, we don't always know what is happening in the compound because it's apartment by apartment, so you don't have any business to interfere in other people's apartment or whatsoever. So the neighbor said that the nanny has been maltreating these three children every time, here and then, and she will be hearing some cries, even with her fellow neighbors. So they'll be asking, where is this cry coming from? Who are the mothers of these three kids? And then one afternoon, you know, me and my roommates, we were just at home and some of my neighbors in the compound. This woman just came in and then she said that she wants to see the mother of these three kids. That the nanny has been maltreating these three children if we are not aware in the compound. I was like, my excuse me, this is in, in, in this Lagos, you don't interfere in people's, you know, people's issues. You don't have any right to interfere in what is happening in people's life. Although we are not aware that this nanny has been maltreating these children because they, normal, they normally come out in the cool of the day, in the evening, to play and will also play with them as well. So along the line, the man said no, that this thing is getting too much, that she has been hearing cries every time, even in the middle of the night. I was like, man, we cannot hear anything because we live at the first entrance of the compound while the neighbor that had these um, three kids, they live at the last extreme of the compound. So, there's no way we can be able to hear a cry of a baby or a toddler from this end to the other end that we are not aware. She said, okay, that, she, that we'll get to find out today. So in the course of that, you know, she started interrogating the nanny that where's the mother of these three kids, you know? And the nanny started to explain that, that she just came to work for them. They gave her these three children to take care of. So the woman was persisting that she wanted to see the mother of these three kids. It was, not, it was a very serious issue. So, at first, we thought the man is just joking, you know, but <laughs> it was not an easy case. Before we knew it, the man just said, okay, she now called DPO, I think uh, Ogombo Divisional Police Station. They came. So when they came, the woman now said, so we've been harboring uh, human trafficking in our compound, and nobody could even mind to come and report to the police. We were like, how? We were here when these people packed in, and nobody knows if anything as such has been happening in this compound. If we were aware, then we would have reported to the police. She said it's a lie that we are all suspects. Before I knew it, the police came, you know, they raided everybody, they arrested all my neighbors, I and myself and my roommates, you know, they took us to the police station. So while we got to the police station, they said, okay, that we are suspects, that we should write our statement, which we did. So after that, the DPO now said, okay, that they should lock all of us up. I was like, what? And the funniest part of this thing is that I've never been to a police station before. I've never had anything that had to involve with the police case or whatsoever. Talkless of me going to 
be in a cell. It was like a joke. Before I knew the police said, oh, come on, off your phone, you bring this one, bring that one. They now put all of us in the cell. <laughs> I was just there laughing. I was thinking it's a joke. In the blink of an eye, I was in a cell. Like, I could not believe it. I was like, so this is how they will bring innocent people to lock them up in a cell for what they don't know about. I was like, wow. I said, God of God, I say, God of God, Holy Land. God of, God of Church of God, Holy Land. Have mercy on me because this thing is beyond my control. I just need your intervention. You know, while I was in the cell, you know, for the first time, I've never been in a cell before, so I was asking this guy, you, what brought you here? What brought you here? What brought you here? If you hear the funny things, they were. <laughs> if you hear the funny things, this guy is saying, you will marvel. I was like, so this is what actually brought you people here. They're not asking, what brought you here? I told them the same thing. That I don't know. They just came and then they read us. They said, we are harboring human trafficking in our compound that was supposed to report to the police. And that's why you are here. And you know police in Nigeria. Once you are involved with them, definitely money will come out from your pocket. So I said, okay, fine. I said, what do I do now? They've, collect, they've seized my phone. I could not reach my sister. I could not call anybody that is around me that I have known, that I know. So I said, okay, fine. I just commit everything into the hands of God. So when in that cell, I slept in that. In fact, I could not even sleep because there was no way I could be able to sleep because the whole place was just thinking and everything. I was like, so... So this is what people pass through. The other guy that was there, asked him, how long have you been here? He said, one month. I said, one month? I'm just here for like 30 minutes. I, I'm feeling like dying already. I can't be in this place. I have to be out of this place by tomorrow morning. You know, as God may have it, um, you know, when it was morning, um, I think my sister came, and then they said, all of us in the compound, that we must bring Shorty to sign for us before we can be released. I said, okay, fine. I called my sister. Then she came with one of the brothers like that. Then they stood and shot it for me, and then I was bailed out. Now, you know, what I learned in all this lesson was that if you think because you don't have food to eat, God has not been faithful to you, you are lying. You know, at times God allows some things to happen to you so that you know and understand that he is God and he is existing. I was like, so this is what they call, like, you on the street normally, you are just there, you know, you, you think nothing is working in your life, but you are working, you can go anywhere you want to go. Nobody will tell you, hey, it's my friend, come here. Don't go to that place. When you are in a cell, you understand what I'm saying. Nobody allows you to move. You don't step an inch. If you are coming close to the gate, the policeman will tell you to go back. So that is, in that, in that cell, I understood what it means to be free. What freedom actually means. Because I've been hearing the word freedom, freedom. I just take it as a mere word. But that day, that is when I understood what freedom is. You cannot walk. You'll be there looking at other people passing by. You cannot walk like them because somebody somewhere decided to just cage you and put you in one place. You know, I just want to thank God because after all those drama, I came out of the police cell, everything went well, and thank God the IPO that handled our case said that if we should not bring our landlord to come to the station to write a statement, that they will lock that compound up and they might come back for second reading to, to take anybody that they will see. I said, okay, fine. So when we got to him, we called the caretaker. I said, okay, bro, call the landlord. Tell him what happened. So they called the landlord. The landlord said, okay, fine, that he will be in the station the next day. Okay. Then I released that. They said we should go. So I came back home. I had my shower and all that. You know, I was just pondering on some things. Then after that, um, the IPO said, okay, that the landlord has came to this police station to see them and them um, that we are free from the case. So the woman that had these three kids, the toddler, that they said it was, she was involved in a, in a, in a uh, human trafficking, had to send his lawyer down to come and meet with the police officer. She had to bring the original documents for them to see that she is not actually rightful the owner of those three kids. She adopted them. So the nanny is not aware of all these things. So that is when they were now able to sort out the issue and then God intervened. Everything was just fine. So I want to glorify God for doing that for me. My third testimony is the biggest testimony. I'm sorry for taking the time of the church, but I just have to say this because I've been telling God, the last time I was in church, mommy gave me a prayer point. He said I should just go, I should be praying that God, that I will see what God will do in my life. You know, I want to thank God that after this scenario, after all this drama I've been going through, God gave me a breakthrough. Now, my third testimony is the biggest testimony. When I, when I left the church that, that time, I had no job. I actually, I left my, my job I was doing. I told my HOD that I'm tired of that job, that I just need to look for something else. 
So I told God, if I'm going to look for a job, I don't want a job that will stress me. I just need a stress-free job and a job that will make me to work Monday to Friday. That's what I told God. So I went to the prayer point mommy gave me, and then I prayed. So one day, I remember a friend of mine that I, t I talked about concerning a job. So I now called him. I said, bro, sorry, do you guys have an, um, is there any vacancy in your organization? He said, no, but it can actually link me with one. I said, okay, fine. He should link me with one. So he now linked me with one company. So when the first day they called me from the company, the lady, a lady called me and said, are you Emerson Blessing? I said, yes. He said, please, I would like you to forward your CV to the HR. I said, okay, fine. So I forwarded my CV to the HR of the company. Then the HR called me for an interview. That was the next Monday. So I went for the interview. When I got to the interview room, I saw one white man standing by the side. Then I saw two, two people seated. I was like, ah, what is happening here? All these people, are there for me alone? What am I coming to do? So the HR said I should sit down. So I have my seat. You know, they interviewed me and all that. So just I said, OK, don't worry. We'll get back to you in two weeks' time. Lo and behold, it was not, it was not up to two days. Somebody that told me that he was going to call me in two, in two weeks' time, he called me the third day. He said I should come back for a, 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 a CBT test. So I went back, I did the company test, and I did perfectly well. I don't know how I managed to pass that test, but I know it is good. So after that, I came back home. The HR said, okay, they will give me another call for me to come back for the third interview. I was like, God, what kind of job is this one? Why would they do three interviews? What did they solve? So, and I said, okay, fine, I will go for the third interview. The HR called me back and said, no, you don't need to come. What do you do? Download Microsoft Word on your phone. Stay at home. That's where the ED will meet up with you. I said, okay, fine. So I spoke with the ED. He said, okay, fine. That I'm most qualified for the job. And before then, the HR told me personally that four graduates that had BSc has been coming for that job interview. They gave the job to none of them. I am not a BSc older, neither a, uh, uh, um, um, a degree older. But this is God. I knew that this is God working. I was not stressed, nothing. In fact, they sent me to, to do my medical checkup with the company's approval. I've done that, and then they sent me my appointment letter for me to resume job tomorrow. I just want to glorify the name of the Lord because this is the kind of job I've been looking for. Despite the fact that I was away from church, God still showed himself strong. I want to tell you, if you're in this house, just believe that God is here. I'm telling you that God is here because I've never seen a thing like this. I've never seen a thing. Even from the first day I stepped my foot into that company, the security guy told me, guy, are you coming for an interview? I said, yes. He looked at me, said, guy, you've gotten the job. I looked at him. I'm like, I don't even know the kind of question they will ask me. And you are telling me I've gotten the job. He said, guy, don't worry, just go. Now me, they tell you, say you don't get this job. And that is exactly how it's happened. I just want to glorify the name of the Lord. I say, may his name be praised forevermore.